Good morning, folks. We've got the top science news, some sun updates, a lump of coal to deliver at the end. You're watching the incoming active regions on the sun, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on the sun were very calm and quiet from a filament and eruptive standpoint. Small dark coronal hole incoming on the south there as well. But the story is, of course, the sunspots, which are developing behind the large leading umbra, and they are producing a slight rise on the X-ray flux, so we'll be monitoring them as they turn in to face the Earth. Solar wind is mostly calm, and that's despite our being within a coronal hole stream. Its plasma pressure is minimally enhanced, and the variability and extended persistence in the stream is light enough for geomagnetic conditions to remain mostly quiet. Let's start off the articles by meeting the crazy beast. Live during the time of dinosaurs? No problem. Madagascar mud? No problem for its crocodile-like hind legs. Small carnivore dinosaurs? No problem when you have the speed and quickness of modern mammals given the front legs. Front teeth like a rabbit, back teeth unlike any known mammal, and a snout gap unseen in any other creature in paleontology. One of the weirdest finds ever. A bit more on the practical side of things, we've got an excellent expose on the current La Nina event ongoing in the Pacific. It is impressively deep, and it may last into the spring. Slight sidestep here to the iceberg A68. Pretty impressive centimeter by centimeter loss tracking with the breakouts included. This is the one heading for the islands in the South Atlantic. But long ago, a tsunami was heading at the coast of Israel. A new study details an earthquake and tsunami event that may extend the human occupation of the region. The appearance of human artifacts only after this event, now identified just under 10,000 years ago, now likely means the previous coastal population was simply wiped from the face of the earth, only to be immediately resettled afterwards. The history that came before the tsunami? Still missing. Let's go to the Astronomer's Telegram for a couple bits of Nova news. First, that new one we covered a couple weeks ago has been confirmed to be producing dust. It is always interesting to see the various time frames that elapse before the brightness gives way to infrared re-emission by that dust. But their bigger story today is the discovery of a new recurrent nova, the X-ray burst variety from pulsars. It is indeed far more common to hear the name X-ray burst rather than X-ray nova, but that's the better term. Like all important activities in space, dumping in material causes a reaction. In the case of a pulsar, the initial condition fires up the lighthouse, but during its lifetime, it has tons of micronova events. While the X-rays would destroy the Earth's atmosphere if it happened on the Sun, the actual ejection nova shell wouldn't even make it to Mercury. Now folks, we greatly appreciate your support, but we're not done. We will do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now we need to quickly respond to Not A Professor Dave, who put out a hit video on us yesterday. But what he doesn't realize is that after his ranting his intentions all last month, I made a video response on Thanksgiving. He apparently missed it and published an attempted hit piece on me yesterday that is utterly destroyed by my video response to his rantings a month earlier. But since you might have missed it, here it is again. On Christmas Eve, the lump of coal I left Dave on Thanksgiving. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. I'm thankful that in 2011, when we said dark matter searches would fail, that the sun was a major controller of the climate, and that there were pre-earthquake electromagnetic signals, that people said these ideas were crazy. I'm grateful because it's so much more satisfying when everyone says it's impossible. I'm grateful that billions of grant dollars and the world's smartest scientists are walking the plank. Even nature knows the game is up. I'm grateful for the professors willing to publish on anisotropic expansion and electromagnetism and on the continued discovery of dust and plasma to incredible scales. I'm thankful that after we were, quote, in fantasy land of earthquake magic, there's now a textbook dedicated to pre-earthquake phenomena and they're 90% electromagnetic. I'm thankful that the AGU has begun to add solar climate forcing into their serious discussions and publications and that NASA and the world's climate community have finally made the first recommendation for solar particle forcing and cosmic rays for climate models. Their absence have been ludicrous. I'm thankful for the publishers since that data release who find global warming to be terrible and our fault, among whom none elected to use that data set. And I'm thankful for those who did use it, among whom 100% have found a need to revise the sun's influence upward. I'm thankful for Professor Pierre-Marie Robitaille 
for his commitment to science, for revolutionizing magnetic resonance imaging, and for the same principle's application to astronomy. I'm thankful for Not a Professor Dave and his infantile attacks on Dr. Robitaille and myself. I'm thankful for the rampant name calling, the ad hominem attacks, and general lack of understanding physics as an example of wrong, and also a reminder not to listen to these kinds of people because I'm thankful for the essence of his failure. It should teach you that some have complete blinders on. These aren't half-cocked theories. They were ignored or dispatched improperly, often with now debunked science. Tomorrow's debunked science appears to be wimp dark matter, the solar constant, and random chaotic seismicity. Those ideas may have been crazy in 2011. Now, there's a reason why there are over a hundred professors and people from NASA, NOAA, ESA, National Weather Service, and USGS who are on my website, the book pre-order list, and in my inbox. You can't call the AGU, Nature, NASA, and peer-reviewed science crazy. I'm thankful for per lecture Dave because I can remember now that not everyone can see the big picture of catastrophism, and not everyone is meant to make it. Gothenburg, Lake Mungo, Mono Lake, Lachamp, Greenland, Vostok. This is a pattern. We're due again now and the Earth's magnetic field is tanking. I'm thankful to Dave for allowing my refocus on the details and for what turned out to be his tremendous support and inspiration to the end game. I'm thankful for every confirmation we share every day of these paradigms and the fact that the old relics like Wimps and Dave are so hopelessly outmatched. Dr. Robitaille is a titan of spectroscopy. I'm a speed reader and I have hyperthymesia. The writing is not only on the wall but in the stars as well. As sure as wimps are about to die, the sun controls the climate and earthquakes like to snitch on themselves. This ongoing magnetic excursion brings about the next end of the world. Bet against it if you want to. You won't be alone. You'll be joined by the world's smartest scientists and billions in grant funding. But they won't save you. I'm so thankful to Dave for helping me to make this point. Thank you, Dave.